What's up guys, back with another educational video and this week we are talking about a new study on intermittent fasting. What's cool and different about this intermittent fasting study is it's one of the larger and longer intermittent fasting studies that have been done in humans. And what's really cool is the lead researcher, Ethan Weiss, actually lost weight using an intermittent fasting approach and is one of the reasons he wanted to do this study because he thought that intermittent fasting or what they referred to as time-restricted eating was the best way to lose weight. So in a lot of the previous uh, intermittent fasting research in humans, it was either short, like less than eight weeks, or they didn't have a control group, or there was some other, you know, kind of weirdness. So this is the first kind of randomized control trial of its size that I know of. So it was 105 participants, and they had them do either time-restricted eating where they would eat their entire feeding window between uh, noon and 8 p.m. versus what they called uh, kind of a balanced approach. And that was just three meals a day. They could have snacks if they wanted, but they kind of gave both groups instructions on like a healthy diet and whatnot, but they didn't tell them how many calories to eat. They didn't tell them what protein, carbs, fats to eat. And that is a limitation in a way, but the reason they constructed it like that was because the lead researcher, Ethan Weiss, felt that the satiety benefits for him of intermittent fasting were one of the big benefits. So he wanted to see if there was a spontaneous reduction in energy intake with the time-restricted eating group. So they had them do these different diets for 12 weeks and then at the end looked at the differences in body composition and health markers and, and uh, activity. They didn't really find much difference, to be honest. There was no difference between groups in amount of fat lost or weight lost. Uh, there was no difference between groups in virtually any health marker. There was only really two differences between the groups. The first difference was that the time-restricted eating group actually decreased their activity spontaneously compared to the balanced group. So they actually dropped their steps more than the group that was eating the balanced diet. They did see a uh, greater reduction in resting metabolic rate in the group doing time-restricted eating, but it wasn't even close to significant. But what this kind of says is that these claims about intermittent fasting or time-restricted eating increasing your metabolic rate, they're just not supported by data. That it just, it, it doesn't do that. And there is some concern about the reduction, the spontaneous reduction in activity. Now, the real concern that came out of this study was that the group that was doing the time-restricted eating or the intermittent fasting group lost significantly more lean body mass than the group doing the balanced diet. There was no difference in calories between groups, but I don't know if they assessed total daily protein. So that, that is a possibility that the group that was doing the time-restricted eating ate less total protein. But again, they were just looking to see what the, these groups did spontaneously. Most diets cause about a 20 to 30% loss of lean mass out of the total weight loss. Meaning if you lose 10 kilos, usually around two to three kilos is lean body mass. In this study, 65% of the weight lost in the intermittent fasting group was lean body mass. And the lead researcher actually said that after this study, he stopped doing intermittent fasting because of the results. I can relate to this a little bit because um, one of the results of the studies I did for my PhD thesis actually changed the way I ate. I used to eat eight meals a day, and long story short, we did a study looking at the duration of muscle protein synthesis, and based on the results, I kind of felt like eating eight meals a day was pointless, and I dropped it back to four to five, and actually felt like I got uh, just as good, if not better results doing that. What does this mean? Does this mean you should not do intermittent fasting or the intermittent fasting sucks? No, it, it does not mean that. I think that one, if you're gonna do intermittent fasting, it's very important to get sufficient daily protein in and try to distribute it as best you can. So if you're doing an eight hour feeding window, you can probably get three really good protein feedings in there and I would make sure you're trying to do that. Further, 
make sure that you're keeping your daily activity up. They didn't really have a, a hypothesis to why these people's uh, step counts dropped spontaneously. So if you're somebody who tracks your steps and you're doing time restricted eating, it might be useful to make sure that you're keeping your steps up to what they were before you started dieting. And just don't expect a big like spontaneous increase in metabolism like all these gurus are saying. There's, there's no evidence of that. This study does not support that. And again, um, there is some concerns about the lean body mass loss because even if you equate for protein, based on some research from my PhD as well as some research from Stu Phillips, um, we have quite a bit of data to suggest that you can't really store protein and you can't make up for low protein meals by overeating protein at another meal. So it's not like if the threshold for maximizing muscle anabolism is say 40 or 50 grams of protein at a meal. If you eat 100 grams, it's not like you're getting double the effect. You're probably getting almost no effect after 40 or 50 grams. Because of that, if your threshold can be hit multiple times per day, say three to five times per day, that is likely going to be superior to a single or two times a day. Um, now there is diminishing returns, like once you get above five, there's probably no difference because now you're just having amino acid levels be elevated all the time, uh, which doesn't seem to make a big difference. And this gets into some of the research I've done. But again, I'm not saying intermittent fasting sucks. I'm not saying it can't work for you. A lot of people do individually find that their hunger is more controlled on an intermittent fasting approach. And that's a perfectly reasonable reason to do it. However, it doesn't increase metabolic rate and it does look like there may be increased risk for lean body mass loss. So if you're going to do it, try to get at least three high quality protein feedings in or another option, you could just evenly distribute your protein throughout the day and just intermittent fast your carbohydrates and fats. Again, fasting has no metabolic advantage. And again, there was no difference in fasting blood glucose, insulin, HOMA IR, blood lipids, nothing. There was no difference between groups. So it, it doesn't look like it provides any kind of physiological advantage other than it's a tool to control your calorie intake. Therefore, you can have four or five protein containing meals per day, keep them low in carb and fat, and then just have your carbohydrates and fats within a short window. There's no evidence that that can't work very well. Um, and, and that's actually kind of what I do, to be honest. Um, if I train in the afternoon, I usually uh, eat mostly protein, and then I will have most of my carbohydrates and fats uh, around my training. Not because I think it's better, but simply because it helps me from a satiety standpoint. If you guys want to check out the full study, you can click the link below. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments. And uh, if you guys enjoy this, make sure you're subscribed to the BioLane membership site. We have a bunch of content on there and we are going to be coming out with our own research review in the coming months. And I think you guys are going to love that. Make sure you check it out. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Like and subscribe and I will catch you next week.